Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Cooking for Cancer. My name is Angela Zaccanini. I'm a registered dietitian, lifestyle nutritionist. This is Danielle Katrina. Good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> it's 12.02. Good afternoon. Yes. We're so excited to be here with you today. We are bringing you, this is amazing. We did this on Wednesday, a poached egg with basil lemon drizzle. Get ready, get excited. This is this is a lovely, yeah, we love lovely it. recipe. And we poached an egg on Wednesday and we did not break it. Yes. It was we did a really good job. We like crushed the game. Yes. You know. Yes. So Ange, this is coming from your Bible. Yes. This is my favorite cookbook ever. I'm gonna show you close up. It is Rebecca Katz, The Cancer Fighting Kitchen. Um, most of our recipes this month and next are gonna be coming from this particular cookbook. Um, this one in general is from her cookbook. We really like it because it, at the beginning of this book, cookbook, it talks about anti-inflammatory ingredients, managing side effects. Um, it uh, has a whole cancer fighting toolkit. It talks about recipes for planning, um, enhancing flavor, enhancing your taste buds, learning food preferences. So it's just a really good cookbook for our cancer population. And it has these amazing recipes that we actually enjoy to cook as well. Okay, so let's get right into it. Poached eggs with basil lemon drizzle. We have Danielle over here juicing a lemon um, so that we can add to the um, lemon basil drizzle. We have basil. We have our egg ready to go to be poached. Um, and I was looking into Alton Brown. He is a chef. He is a famous chef. Yeah. And he is on the Food Network. He also has his own channel or um, his own TV show called Good Eats. And he's very scientific when it comes to nutrition and cooking. So it, um, it was... I guess smart for me to go to him for a poached egg because I feel like it does have a lot to do with science. <laughs> I'm not even gonna ask what's going on over there. The wrong side? Like, should I be doing another side? Try this one. Okay. Is it all getting stuck? On I it? don't know. That's why I know nothing's literally coming out. <laughs> yeah, try this one. I wonder if that's like more of a grater. Yeah. I mean, it's like cheese grater. Like, you know, I'm thinking yeah. like Parmesan cheese. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Do you want me to talk about this? Sure. Okay. So we splurge. We got a juicer. So 10, 10 bucks at Target. It's big. Um, but you can already see this. This is so much easier. It is worth the $10. Yes. You can, of course, cut it you know, like this. But what I'll say is it gets all of the, um, the seeds. Have you ever bit like into a lemon seed, it's Ooh. disgusting. Yeah. So this gets all the seeds. It also gets like the actual inside of the lemon that doesn't go through. So you really get straight lemon juice. And then we also um, invested in a grater slash um, zester. As long as you know which side to use, it works well. I was using the wrong side. So this was a little bit more expensive. This was $15 at Target, but it's not just a zester, it's a grater for many purposes, but I really like that it had this container underneath to capture that. So again, just some tools to make your life a little bit easier if you wanna speed this up. Again, you don't have to, you can peel off that lemon peel and mince it up for your zest. Yep. But it does make a difference. I always skip the zesting. I'm not gonna do it anymore, Ange. What's you're going gonna, on? you're actually gonna include the zest. Yeah, okay, good. Um, all right, so while she's doing that, I'm gonna start the, um, adding the basil to the food processor. So to make the lemon basil drizzle, you are gonna need a food processor um, or some sort of blender, anything that's going to just make it almost like a dressing or a sauce. So I'm just gonna add most of these leaves in here. It does call for one cup um, of loosely packed basil. The amount of lemon and lemon zest you'll need is um, one teaspoon of lemon zest and two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. All right. So again, can we talk a little bit about this pest, this recipe? Because we, we kind of compared this to pesto. Yeah. But what's really nice about this is, well, pesto has great fats. Mm -hmm. um, you got to be careful on how much you're obviously taking in because yeah. you don't want to overdo it. Yeah. This, 
I feel like you can overdo it. I mean, it's basil, lemon, some olive oil, and salt and pepper. Yes, that's it. Yeah. And you know, with a regular pesto, you're going to be using some sort of nut. So pine nuts, you can use walnuts, almond, whatever you have on hand. So this omits that. It also omits the Parmesan cheese. Yeah. So again, you're having a lower. And fat, there's not that much oil in this, right? No. Is it like a it's, tablespoon? Well, it's a quarter cup, which it's is still cup. only this, you know, a quarter cup. <laughs> yeah, not at all. And um, the recipe actually calls for like we're just going to show you how to make one poached egg today, but this recipe is making four. So the entire amount of lemon basil drizzle that we make is going to you know work for at least four eggs now keep in mind if you are struggling with weight gain like you're losing a lot of weight with cancer treatment um you're struggling with your appetite you could make this into a um pesto get the added fat get the added calories to really bulk up your Ooh, poached egg. over whole wheat pasta mm -hmm. i'm in yeah i got pasta today yeah or even just like on a slice of toast, almost like, now I'm thinking. Oh yeah, avocado. Oh yeah. And a whole oh. grain piece of bread with the poached egg, then the basil. We're going to Italy. Uh, we'll show them what to do. Don't even play I mean, around because. No, but that, that, that sounds like something you'd see like off of the Eat, Pray, Love. Yeah. I mean, I literally only watch for the food. For the, I, I <laughs> love when she's in Italy. I oh like to re rewatch yes. that part. Yes. Um. Okay. So while she's still juicing, I'm going to add the quarter cup of olive oil to the food processor. I'm getting a juicer. You love that. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. First of all, I'm getting an arm workout. <laughs> so, I'm going to turn on my Apple Watch here, get a calorie burn. Yeah. But this literally is, ooh, this is like a no mess. It's like you get all the seeds. You get what's like the inside part. Is there like a, besides the inside? Um, what's the inside? The flesh. The flesh? Yeah, okay. Let's take it. Yep. Like you're getting all of that. So you're not messing around. And obviously I'm doing some extra lemon because we're going to poach some eggs for our staff. Yep. We're doing a little team builder today. It's been a long week. It's been a week. We had a big training here and it went well, um, but our staff needs a little bit of luck. Yeah. TLC. Um, okay. Some of this, Ange? Yep. So you have the zest ready to go? Yeah, Ross. I think. Yeah. Wait, let me see. Oh, Someone else. on second like hot on the inside here. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Right? Mm -hmm. It smells so good, yeah, so fragrant. We're not on the video, but I know. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> we'll bring it back. All right, go ahead. Thank you. All right. So going to add the zest. How much of a, well, how much do you need of the lemon? I forget. Um, two me, tablespoons. I didn't use all that. Should I? Uh, no. I'm like, eh, no. So, this is for us. I mean, that's all right. We'll add more to it. It's not a big deal. All right, two tablespoons. Look at that. You take it right off. It's in the bowl. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is much faster. There you go, Ange. Thank okay. you so much. All right, so we have the olive oil. We have the basil. We have the zest. We have the fresh lemon juice. And I did put a little bit of salt on there. We're going to top this on here and toss. It's going to be like a pesto consistency, but not as thick. It's definitely going to be a little bit more runny. All right. Mm. You have that there. So you see how it's moving to one side. It is definitely a little bit runnier than what you would have in a pesto. So we're gonna let that sit until our poached egg is ready to go. So for Alton Brown, to poach an egg, you definitely need some uh, vinegar. So we just have white plain vinegar. We're going to add a tablespoon to the water. I'm just dusting away over here. <laughs> this is very lovely. It's like giving me, uh, it's like therapy. So, and an arm workout. Huh? <laughs> Literally. Okay. So he also mentioned that the water should be up to a temperature of 190 degrees before you add your egg. And you almost want it to a uh, simmer. So we're gonna check this out. He also mentioned once it gets to that simmer, you wanna put your slotted spoon in and remove all those bubbles. So you just kind of like move your hand uh, back and forth in a waving motion to remove those bubbles. 
right, we're getting up there. It's at 180 so far. Okay, and so like if you don't have one of these things at home, like a temperature yeah, or a thermometer, thermometer, what are we doing? So you're definitely just gonna want it to get to a center. So not to the point where it's boiling, just where it has those light bubbles at the bottom. So we have it right here at 190. Um, so you would probably want it on a medium high heat. I'm gonna put my um, swatted spoon in there to remove all of those bubbles. And instead of just cracking your egg right into the water, you're going to actually put your egg in a little bowl and you're going to add the bowl. You're actually gonna like emerge the bowl in the water. Okay, wait, I'm gonna do something. Okay. I'm gonna move this camera over. Okay. So team, this is gonna be wobbly. This is not high tech at all, but bear with. I wanted you to see this view because this is awesome. Okay. And we're going close up with all you right. here. Okay. Yep. Um, so this is what's. Yep. I gotcha. Okay. I don't know if we can get it. All right. Good. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So you see egg is in here. We're going to submerge that last bowl and just drop it in. You can see it's hitting the bottom. So once it cooks a little bit, you're actually going to, oops, sorry. <laughs> oh, this way. Yep. All right, there we go. Okay. okay. So you Ooh. see the white starting to cook, that yolk is starting to cook and it's actually starting to lift from the bottom, likely because of that vinegar. Um, and you're actually gonna wanna like do a little swirly motion. So it lifts from the bottom, almost like a little tornado in the water. And you're gonna have that cook for about three minutes. We're at 12, 14. Okay, I'm gonna put this down. I'm yeah. gonna put it right over here, get Ange again. All right. Oh, you're gonna see all of our teaching. Right. Ella, hey, there she is. <laughs> and then we'll bring it back up. Okay. okay. We're talking about five minutes. All right, so we're letting that cook for three minutes. We are also going to, um, have a, a plate with a paper towel on it because once you pull that um, egg out, you're actually going to want it to um, absorb all that moisture. You are also going to want to use a slotted spoon um, when you are pulling it out from the water so that, it, again, that water isn't sitting on the egg. When we cooked it the other day, we didn't time it. So we actually wanted the yolk to be a little bit more firm, have the white a little bit more cooked because when we broke into it, it was more runny. Um, and of course, whatever you're looking for, you can choose, but um, the longer it's cooked, obviously the more firm that yolk is gonna be. You might need to go over and show. Looking good. Looking good? Mm -hmm. Just a couple more, well, a minute or two. So, Angela, let's talk about cholesterol, eggs. You know, there's a big, I think, you know, yes. thing out there. It's like, oh my gosh, eggs, bad cholesterol. Yes. You can't eat too much. I grew up on an egg farm, so I'm partial to the eggs are so good for you. You yes. know? Yes. So, we do have a recommended weekly amount. We do encourage less than six eggs per week. Um, there is cholesterol found in the yolk. However, eggs can also enhance your good cholesterol. So there's good cholesterol, there's bad cholesterol, but both of them can help your total cholesterol. So you want to keep on an eye on all those levels. Now, obviously other uh, foods can contribute to your cholesterol levels like saturated fats, red meats, um, your eggs and other dairy products. So you want to not only watch your eggs, but other sources of protein as well. So Eggs are good for you, and it's a great source of protein, and they're so versatile. All right, guys. We definitely didn't cook this. Oh, wow. We're doing it. Okay, she's doing it. Sorry. Oh, I know. She didn't. Okay, I'm going to pull us back over here, so bear with. Yes, we are getting a new camera thing happening. Don't you worry. All right, so Angela's going to show this up to us. I feel like we're crooked. There you go. Let me pull it. Maybe. Pull it down. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. You gotta, it's bright. Mm. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Yep. Guys, so easy. Like literally, as you know, Ange and I are not uh not chefs. Not chefs. I mean, Ange obviously is so 
completely uh, better than myself. Um, but she's, you know, we're just normal people trying to cook better things. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you could just make a dippy egg, you know, if you weren't trying to be. Uh, but some people prefer the poached egg, which is it's fun. different. I yeah. mean, it's definitely different than um, a dippy egg yeah. for sure. A sunny side up egg. I love like I feel like that's like our. Ooh, um, I should never Sorry, mess with this camera. So I know you're gonna vomit. Don't um, worry, we're gonna be fixing this problem really soon. Um, all right, so you can actually add this to a bed of arugula. You can have some asparagus with it. We talked about the toast with the avocado. Throw it on there, um, and then of course you're gonna add that. Oh my gosh, so good basil drizzle, and you have a beautiful poached egg with a delicious basil drizzle. And that lemon really gives it a tart flavor um, that we all love. So, all right, so that's this week with Cooking for Cancer. And I always ask you what next week is, and then we never have the paper right in front of us. I literally should. just looked at it today. I'm gonna I quickly move it. Uh, oh, it's a dip. It's a snack one. Maybe, oh, this is gonna be good, especially yeah. it's football season. Navy bean and sun dried tomato dip. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. That's lovely. Thank you all so much for joining us. Please be patient with us. We are getting there with our new production equipment. Um, so stay tuned. We're hoping to bring that to you in the next few weeks. Take care, have a great weekend.